So perhaps this has begun to sink in. Uh, I, I also am beginning to detect a, an awareness that the war in Ukraine uh, has gone very badly uh, for our proxy and that uh, Washington would like to... If I lived on the border right now with Ukraine and Russia, I would be keenly interested in arranging negotiations as soon as possible. Because the alternative, and let's be frank about this, this is very important. But <clears throat> I think that there is a growing awareness that we are simply not postured in any way, shape, or form to conduct uh, two-front wars or two-front offensives or two-front policies of any kind. In fact, you know, Washington is historically known as a essentially a one-policy town when it comes to foreign policy. They can't really focus uh, broadly, never have been able to. So perhaps this has begun to sink in. Uh, I, I also am beginning to detect a, an awareness that the war in Ukraine uh, has gone very badly uh, for our proxy and that uh, Washington would like to, uh, if not pivot to Asia, certainly, I would say, divert attention to China and away from Russia. Whether or not they can come up with something that's going to be meaningful is very much open to debate. Uh, I just, I have no feel for that at all. And I'm very skeptical. Well, Seymour Hirsch has reported in his latest uh, Substack post article, essay, whatever you want to call it, that apparently there's a group of countries in Eastern Europe, I actually saw this yesterday and kind of surprised me, um, that Poland apparently is leading the charge in pressuring Zelensky to uh, wrap the war up, so to say, even as uh, Hirsch says, at the cost of uh, stepping down as president of Ukraine, which seems to me uh, a little bit uh, surprising uh, because uh, unless Warsaw is playing a game of 3D chess here, that being the loudest spokesperson of the Kiev regime in Eastern Europe, all of a sudden they're turning around and saying, no, you got to go and we've got to end this war. So my feel is, if this is true, this is probably happening under the influence of, you know, a Chinese intervention. And that Chinese envoy that was sent to Europe will be in Warsaw this week, I think tomorrow, actually, speaking with our authorities. Um, but what do you uh, think about the veracity of uh, Hirsch's report? I mean, you've been seeing how Warsaw has been acting during the last year. We've had these discussions before. Uh, would you impugn also uh, a notion of realism on the Warsaw government from what you've been seeing in the last uh, 365 days plus? Well, reality is much more likely to intrude in Warsaw than it is in Washington. Uh, let's be frank, uh, you live next door to the disaster, and the disaster is having an impact on Poland. I mean, at first, uh, everything was uh, hearts and flowers and encouragement and victory and so forth. But now it's become quite obvious that that's not going to happen. The probability that the Russians could ever be pushed out of eastern Ukraine is about zero. Uh, the probability that the Ukrainians will or may have already expended their last reserves of material and, and soldiers is high, uh, with the result that very, very shortly there won't be much that the Ukrainians can do about whatever the Russians undertake. And I think they, the Russians will begin to move. I think they will move deliberately and cautiously, maximizing the use of their standoff strike systems and also, obviously, uh, taking full advantage of their dominance overhead with intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance. So I wouldn't expect a, a sudden blitzkrieg, per se. But clearly, Odessa and Kharkov are going to fall under Russian uh, control and authority again. That's inevitable. So the question is, what can you get if you negotiate at this point? I think Zelensky knows the opportunity to negotiate and get anything of value for Ukraine is probably past. Washington is obviously beginning to uh, have second thoughts about its interests in the region. Uh, I think NATO's in a lot of trouble. I've thought this for a long time. Behind the scenes, things are terrible. So none of what Sy says surprises me. The only thing that I find a little surprising is uh, Sy's notion that Zelensky could be asked to step down and would do so willingly. I don't know where Zelensky goes. He'll have to talk to the oligarchs. They put him into power and his sponsors in Washington, New York City, and elsewhere and see what he can do. But uh, it's too soon for him to throw in the towel, and he's being told that. You know, just a few weeks ago, he was told literally either you counterattack or 
you know, arranged surrender talks. Now that was, that came out of the White House. It's quite a leak. So that we have had some attacks, but nothing significant, nothing on a scale that would make any difference. Doug, are you, are, before we get into the minutia of uh, the situation on the ground and who might strike first and how, but are you getting the sense that due to the deteriorating situation for the Ukrainians, the narrative of supposed success on the part of the Ukrainian armed forces is getting dumber and dumber? I mean, when I heard for the first time that apparently a Patriot shot down a Russian hypersonic missile, I, I just laughed basically. Then we heard that it was, what, 30 missiles fired in two minutes. That's a pretty quick burn rate. So I'm getting the feeling that the more ridiculous the narrative, uh, the more tragic and horrible the situation for the Ukrainians on the ground and for Zelensky in Kiev. Would you agree? Well, the ghost of Kiev is clearly back in the air, flying everywhere and shooting everything down. There's no doubt about it. Uh, the narrative is losing its uh, its strength, its force. There's There's no question. You know, I get things all the time from Germany, Austria, France, Great Britain. People are are finally beginning to say, look, this is ridiculous. This is taking us nowhere. I I think, uh, sadly, you know, there are, there are positive features to NATO, one of which is to comparative u- universal consensus that there should be no more war in Europe, hence we should have NATO. That was a positive thing. But I now see that uh, there's a, a dramatic loss of faith in that, uh, that notion. So I think we're on the threshold of a new world, frankly. And remember that next June, or actually, what am I saying next June, next month, uh, we have the St. Petersburg Forum. And 81 nations are, are going to join the BRICS. Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa, they're all going to join and begin seriously examining the alternative to the dollar-dominated financial system, which looks like some sort of uh, currency or basket of currencies, all of which are backed by gold. Now, this de-dollarization is very serious, and the United States government knows it, but no one in Washington will mention it. So there are really two things happening right now. You have a financial war between the United States, its allies, and Russia, China, and the other 81, 82, 83 countries out there who want to de-dollarize, then you also have the war on the ground in Ukraine. We appear to be losing both, uh, and that's beginning to sink in. But again, <clears throat> it, the American people, and you, you know this from your experience here, very few Americans pay very much attention to anything beyond their borders. That's the bad news. And the bad news, in addition to that, is that as a result, they tend to abdicate responsibility for the conduct of their affairs to a small minority of people in Washington who've been able to get away literally with murder. Well, I I think that's going to continue until we have a real serious crisis that no one can avoid talking about. I think that's going to have a lot to do with the banking system, our financial system, the international financial system. Those things are closing in on us. As far as the military is concerned, I, there's a sudden awakening that we can't recruit. We have this uh, very unhappy military establishment filled with people that are not terribly interested in, in becoming woke, who recognize that that's essentially the death of discipline, the death of uh, effectiveness. All of these things seem to be coming together in, in sort of a perfect storm, if you will. And all of that is going to undermine what's what we've been undertaking in Ukraine. And I think to some extent, President Putin and his advisors know this. And I think that's why they've tread cautiously. Because if I look back on the on the last year plus, if there's one thing we can say about the Russian approach to this whole business, it's extreme caution. There has been a desire to avoid giving us an excuse <clears throat> to intervene militarily. I think that's worked well, but now I think there's a, it's dawning on people in Washington that even if we wanted to intervene in it, it wouldn't go well for us. And so they're sobering up. And again, that explains this new focus on China. Let's start talking about China. Let's talk less about Ukraine. And in the meantime, what do we do about the debt? What do we do about financing? Uh, and the 120% uh, debt to GDP ratio. Those things are beginning to take precedence. So it looks like Putin's caution has paid off in that regard. 
But uh, as far as uh, Warsaw is concerned, if I lived on the border right now with Ukraine and Russia, I would be keenly interested in arranging negotiations as soon as possible. Because the alternative, and let's be frank about this, this is very important for people to understand. The Russians, if they're not given some sort of security guarantee of neutrality for Ukraine in some fashion, they'll go all the way to the Polish border before they stop. I mean, what choice do they have? I mean, if they're constantly confronted with nothing but hostility and attacks and promises of future attacks, there's no incentive to do anything else. So I think people have begun to understand that. But the Russians, of course, as you know and I know, are not interested in governing Ukraine. They don't want to govern Western Ukraine, for God's sakes. I don't know why anybody would want to govern that place right now. 